Good afternoon, I'm John Warniak. I am co-founder of the Motocross Sports Medicine and Science Foundation along with Dr. Amy McIntosh from the Mayo Clinic. And what we've done today is we're actually here at uh, the Las Vegas Supercross and we're introducing the latest product that we have for the Motocross Sports Medicine and Science, what we call gear. It's the accelerometers that the rider will actually wear as well as the bike. And basically the Supercross and Motocross industry is about 20 years behind the motorsports industry in terms of collecting data, what the rider or driver sees, and what the vehicle sees in terms of G-forces, accelerations. So in this great sport of motocross and supercross, we want to bring that data and the research to the front lines. And that's why we're aligned with the Asterisk Mobile, Mobile Medical Center with Tom Carson here today. So basically what we want to go through is introduce our new product here. And this is the, basically we call the EDR, Electronic Data Recorder, or better known as a black box. This evolved out of IndyCar, out of NASCAR, out of F1, now all those vehicles started 20 years ago with the black box. This black box that is made specifically for motocross. This is about our third generation that we come across. It weighs about two ounces. It's about uh, two, and a, two and a quarter by two and a quarter size. And this will actually be mounted on the helmet or the neck brace of the rider. Tom and uh, Dr. Paul Ryman and uh, Dr. John Bodner are going to do some testing here starting in two days. But, so we'll get the rider EGR connected with their ear accelerometers. These are the same types of accelerometers that IndyCar F1 NASCAR drivers wear. There's three accelerometers in each ear. So this will connect to the box, sampling at 250 times a second of all the G-forces that the rider's seeing at the head. As well as there'll be another box on the bike. So that will record the G-forces on the bike. So the biomechanical forces of the rider, the biomechanical forces, or the mechanical forces on the bike, we can combine that. But the real information is taking the data, transmitting that into the information and then the knowledge and turning that knowledge into action. And that's where Amy comes in. The research has to be able to tell us what the data is doing, and then we have to apply that knowledge at Tom's level. So, Amy? So it all started a couple years ago when, because I'm an orthopedic surgeon, and we see a lot of motocross injuries, and uh, I suspected there was a high number of concussions. So I started looking at it, and basically what it showed is that at least 50% of riders at some point have a concussion but then they're still riding. Mm -hmm. Nobody really knows when they should ride and when they shouldn't ride. And basically the only thing my study showed is that if they had help fitting their helmet, they could decrease their risk of a concussion. And when I talked to John, I said, wouldn't it be great if we could sort of set a threshold or, or know what kind of G-forces are going through their head? And then we can just tell them that you experienced a G-force above this level. This is highly correlated with concussive symptoms we think you should get off your bike and then go through a progressive return to riding program. And personally, I think that's just gonna help the sport get safer and help riders ride longer and better. And as far as advancing the safety of the sport, that's where it really fits in, but also advancing the sustainability of the sport. We can't keep hurting our heroes, exactly. I mean, without the data, we can't do the research. Without the data research, can't get better products and find things that Tom does with all of his crew here right at the track. And personally, I think if we can figure out this data, we might actually be able to reduce injuries. So hopefully the data that we collect will then translate into real world improvement in the uh, outcome and durability of riding for the future. Exactly. Yeah. Where the Astros Mobile Medical Center steps in, 14 years ago we embarked on a whole new program or stepped into a field that no one had ever touched before. And in that 14 years with a great team, we've been able to implement several safety devices such as the eject, concussion testing, and, and hopefully this is a new avenue to progress in a, a level of safety with the help of this new product, with the help of the different researches and research facilities, we can bring that to the track each and every week because we have the access to all the riders on a, on a weekly basis. I'm also interested to see if these monitors can pick up, because everybody wants to know if these neck braces help, and I think it'll be interesting to see if the G-forces change when they're riding with and without a brace, because no one's really had a, a true answer to that question. And I think this research will, will help that too. This will give us the data. I think uh, if you think of the Motocross Sports Medicine and Science Foundation being that pipeline of information feeding into Tom and his folks to really take that and say, okay, this is probably what you saw. And literally within, if not minutes, having been able to download that data and say, that was a pretty big hit. Now we know what that hit was quantitatively. Say, yeah, there probably could be some internal injury or don't worry, there's no internal injury. So hopefully give them more information at their fingertips at the site where they're doing actually the action.
Um, how long until we see that being mandatory? Would you guys even have an idea on that? Uh, that's up to Feld and the AMA <laughs> and MX Sports, but starting testing in two days. Uh, it could be as little as a year where this becomes mandatory for them. I think it depends, on, one, depends yeah. on what the data shows. I mean, yeah, exactly. Yeah, but I think the nice thing is we'll be able to deconstruct a, an accident and with this data say, ooh, this kid's at high risk of concussion or liver and spleen right. injury, pneumothorax, things that can really you know keep a rider down for a ride. Yep. And then their index of suspicion will be higher and they'll say, just based on your G-forces, we should get this test, this test, and this test. And it's gonna just, it's gonna help medicine be more efficient for these riders and hopefully get them back to riding soon. And from a personal training perspective, you could be running on the track and say, okay, uh, James or Cole, you're taking the right side of that jump, you're seeing six Gs. If you go on the left side, you're only seeing three Gs. Stay in the left and you won't beat yourself up as much. Save that for the end of the race. And again, from a training perspective, it's instant feedback. This is gonna be an invaluable tool to help the people make the correct decisions that's gonna benefit the whole entire motorcycle community. Not just the professional racer, but every manufacturer, gear company, to be able to come out and hopefully produce better gear, better products, and keep a safer rider on the track and hopefully ensure a longer career. Yep. I think the trickle down effect is, yep. is humongous. It's, it's, and the next generation, sustainability of the sport. Uh, and I, and I, you know, I gotta commend the AMA and Feld and Asterisk for getting ahead. And you started this, what, eight years ago? 14 years ago. 14 years ago. Eight years ago with the uh, Mobile Medical Center. Getting in front of them, being proactive. You look what's happening with the NFL, some of the other sports, particularly the kids' sports. We want the sustainability of the sport. We want to make it as safe as you possibly can with the technology that's available.